In this video, we're going to take a look at compound events. Now, compound events can come in two different uh, types usually. They can be either mutually exclusive or inclusive events. And mutually exclusive events are ones where there's no overlap. It's either one or the other. So, for example, if we're talking about rolling a 1 or a 2, well, there's no way to roll a 1 and a 2 if we're rolling a dice at the same time. It's either a 1 or it's a 2. They're mutually exclusive. Inclusive events are if there is some overlap and we have to account for that overlap. So, in the same type of example of rolling dice, if we had um, the probability of rolling a 2 or the probability of rolling an even number, well, we have 2 when 2 is also even, so we have to account for that. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull that out, the, the 2, so that we don't count that twice and get a true probability there. So let's take a look at the formulas for each of these, the mutually exclusive and the um, inclusive events. So the probability of an event A or B, and remember I can use that union symbol to represent or, A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of event B. Okay, So I just add the two probabilities together, that'll get me the or situation probability. Okay, Inclusive events, it's pretty much the same thing to start with. So you have the probability of A or B, and that's going to be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, but then the one difference we have to subtract the probability of getting A and B. And I can use that symbol, the intersection, to represent and. And that's to, t to clear out those that we double count because they're in both groups. Okay, so let's take a look at some, some uh, examples here. Let's say we have an unlabeled can. We know it's uh, some type of uh, food. And it, the probability is one half that it's corn. And the probability is one third that it's green beans. And there's some other probabilities that we don't know, but let's say that we want to know the probability that it's either corn or green beans. Well, that's mutually exclusive because it can't be corn and green beans. It's one or the other. So all I need to do here is just add up the individual probabilities. So in this case, I'm going to take one half plus one third. Now I need a common denominator. It would be six. So one half would be three sixths plus <coughs> one third would be two sixths, and we would end up with five sixths. So the probability that it's going to be either corn or green beans is going to be five sixths. So pretty good probability that we're going to get some kind of vegetable out of that can. All right, let's take a look at this next one. The probability of rolling a three or a four if we're rolling a dice. Okay, well, can it be both? Is there any overlap there? Well, it's either a 3 or a 4, so no, there isn't any overlap. So it's mutually exclusive, and I'm just going to add the two probabilities together. So probability of rolling a 3 would be 1 sixth, plus the probability of rolling a 4, which is also 1 sixth. Add those together, I get 2 sixths, or just one third. So mutually exclusive, just add them together. How about this one? The probability of rolling an even number or a number greater than two. Hmm. Well, notice that this first part is the same no matter what. So let's find the probability of each of those individual pieces. So the probability of rolling an even number. Well, let's see. The dice we have two, four, six. There's three even numbers out of a total of six possibilities plus a number greater than two. What numbers are greater than two? Three, four, five, six. 
would all be greater than 2, so that would be 4 out of 6. Now, here's just a little thing that you can notice and can be a check for you. 3 plus 4 would be 7 out of 6. Remember that the probability of 1 means that it's certain to happen, and this probability would add up to something greater than 1. So it's saying that it's certain to happen, but we know that there's a number that's not an even number, but also is less than 2. The number 1 doesn't fit either of these. So that would be a case when it doesn't work, but our probability would say that it has to work. So that should give us a clue that, oops, there must be something we need to take out. We must have double counted something. So we need to subtract out the probability of A and B happening. So we're going to subtract. It's going to be something out of 6. How many even numbers are also greater than 2? Well, let's see. Even numbers greater than 2. 4 and 6. So two of those would be we double counted in our two probabilities. So we need to subtract those out. So 3 plus 4 is 7. Minus 2 is going to be 5 out of 6. Huh. And that makes sense because, remember, I said 1 doesn't work. Well, 1 is the only thing that doesn't work. Everything else will work for us, so our probability of 5 out of 6 makes sense. 1 sixth would be that 1, so 5 out of 6. Huh. There we go. Okay, let's take a look at a few more over here. <clears throat> Dealing with a, a situation with a bunch of doctors that go to this conference, 240 of them are family practice, 270 are from the U.S., and one-third of the family practice are not from the U.S. Okay, family practice, or practices family medicine, or is from the U.S. So, we'll start by finding the number that practice family medicine. Well, that's 240 out of the total number for the conference. That would be 400 plus... I'm looking for the other situation now. So from the U.S., how many are from the U.S.? 270 out of 400. Okay. Now, there must be some overlap here, and it signals to me because this would give us more than 400. So we got to have some overlap to account for. So we need to figure out how many practice family medicine and are from the U.S. Okay, well... Practice family medicine and from the U.S. It says one-third family practice are not from the U.S. So we could find out how many are. Two-thirds would be from the U.S. of the family practice. So one-third of 240, well, that would be divided by 3, would be 80. So two-thirds would be 160. So we're going to have to subtract out 160 and then we just go ahead and figure out what we have here so 240 plus 270 and then minus 160 well that's gonna give us let's see 240 that'd be 400 510 minus 160 would be 410 350 out of 400 and that, of course, would simplify to divide by, let's see, uh, 50 on the top and the bottom, and we'd get 7 over 8. All right, so that's the probability that they practice family medicine or they're from the U.S. How about this one? Practice family medicine or is not from the U.S.? Well, we already found the practice family medicine. That's 240 out of 400. Now we need to know how many are not from the U.S. Well, it says 270 are from the U.S. out of a total of 400. So that means 130 are not from the U.S. Now again, we need to find the overlap because they could be both. So practice family medicine and not from the U.S. Well, let's see. One-third of family practice are not from the U.S. So one-third of these divided by 3 would be 80. So we got to subtract out 80. That would fit into both groups. So go ahead and 
do the math here. So we have, I already have a common denominator of 400. 240 plus 130 would be 370. Then minus 80 would be 290 over 400. I can simplify, divide by 10 on the top and the bottom. So that would give me 29 over 40. Can't simplify any further. Okay, then, does not practice family medicine or is from the U.S.? Okay, so let's take a look at each of those individual ones. Does not practice family medicine. Okay, uh, 240 practice family medicine, so 400 minus 240 would be 160. So there's 160 that do not practice family medicine out of 400. Then plus, from the U.S., how many are from the U.S.? 270 out of 400. Then I need to subtract what they have in common. So, let's see. Not practicing family medicine or is from the U.S. So, we need to know the U.S. ones that are not practicing family medicine. Well, we found out before that there was 160 that were practicing family medicine in the U.S., so let's see there's let's see there must be a hundred and ten from the US but are not doing family medicine subtracting 270 minus 160 so 110 that are not practicing family medicine but are in the US add these things up and subtract so 160 plus 270 would be 370 430 minus 110 that would be 320 over 400 simplify divide by let's see 80 on the top and the bottom we end up with four fifths so compound events uh, it's two things that it's an or situation if they're mutually exclusive meaning that there's no overlap we just simply add the probabilities of each individual thing to get the probability of the or. If they're inclusive, meaning that there's some overlaps, things could fit into both groups, we need to subtract out the ones that we doubled up on. So we need to figure out how many that is. Here we had a couple, several examples of that subtracting out the, the duplicates and then get our probability. Hope that was helpful. Continue to work hard on your math and I know you'll do great.